Hey, this is Ron KC0QBT. I'm in Rolla, Missouri, and I am going to work on a repeater that is up there. That is TJ Hall. And sometime back, back in March, I came down to Rolla, which is where I went to university, and worked with these guys on a DMR repeater. It's one of our BCR 40Us. Anyway, uh, haven't been able to get down here in a while because of the virus and stuff, but now I'm back in the area and I wanted to go ahead and help them get this thing certain, uh, straightened out. And I'm excited to work with these guys. All right, I'm up here at the repeater and uh, it does work analog. Uh, now we're just trying to figure out what's going on with the digital stuff. Um, we got the Pi here and it's been connected. So just, uh, just doing some diag on it with the uh, uh, with the computer here, I don't see it popping up on the Brandmeister network, so I'm in the midst of trying to figure that out. So stand by. Two, which of the four that were on that side, it was it was just one. Yeah, we are. We think we have an antenna receive issue, and back in there, that's where the duplexers are. That's where the duplexer is. It's a D star. Well, it looks like D star duplexer. Well. Well, so well, that's what it probably that's used what, to that's be. That's what used to be was we used to have a D uh, Star machine here. Yeah. Uh, we donated ours to the Raw Radio, uh, Raw Regional Radio Society. Okay. Of ours. Um, and so then we had we had the space, and so we, we had a DMR machine here. Yeah. Now we're moving to this one. Uh, so we're on antenna two, or like the line two, so we can swap over to four. Okay. Which is the other other UHF. Um, I had it backwards, so we actually we do have the other UHF ones. There's three we can play with. All right. If you want to split them, we can do that as no, well. I'll go ahead and try it. Put it on four. Am I not going to get zapped? Am I? No, no, it's fine. All right, so now we're on the, on the different UHF antenna. All right. Tell you what, let's go back outside and take a look. I'll show everybody the antennas. But yeah, this is we're up on this. Yeah, two of them. We're on this building. See pretty much forever up here. So this is about probably 12 floors up. The bottom room might be about 15. Yeah, and we are going. These are the. There's the two meter antenna that they use. That yeah. tall one. The tallest one is the 145 machine. Uh, and so we were on this left one. This 440 fold dipole. The left one on the on the rail here. I just swapped it over to the the, the one on the right side. Okay. See if, see so it only has it only has four folded dipoles, or is that two? It's four. Okay, and then the other one has quite a few more. It's got one, two, three, four. Well, well which one? Two meter? Or the one on the left. They're, there's, they're, there's, they, they both have four. Okay. This, this one's just turned. Oh, I can't, I can't, can't see it. Yeah. yeah, there they are. I got gotcha. you. All right. Yeah, they were hiding yep. out of sight. All right. Well, we're gonna go back downstairs and do some more range checking. Okay, we're back for a third time. We tried two antennas and we're still having some issues. We can cover the entire campus and probably all the town of Rolla. But once we get out of ways, we start seeing a lot of deep, I don't know, where the receive side gets corrupted and it starts really breaking up. And so we think that the performance issue is either a duplexer or a, a receive adjustment. We're not certain, but I'm betting on duplexer. But again, I don't know without looking at it with some. We got this. We got this thing here. Okay, that that clip light's not on, so we're gonna adjust it. So you got your handy dandy tool. Which one do you want? The the precision screwdriver of the flathead. Yeah. So what has to happen, here move your finger so I can see the clip LED, there's the clip LED, am I even on it, here, yeah he's going to man minister to the camera. Back that off just a touch, there that's where it should be. Now, let's put it back in there. 
Okay, that's that. That's a, that's where it should be. And when I hit the parrot, it should not light up. KC zero QVT, and I don't see the clip light coming on. KC zero QVT. Okay, so we got a good working machine. It's just that when we get out and about, it starts failing at a, probably about three or four miles south of town. So we're going to test this, and if this isn't it, we're going to pull the duplexer and retune it. All right, what we decided to do, just given what we, we think there might be a duplexer issue, so we are going to pull, there's only one, this was the duplexer that was on that repeater. We're gonna take it back and I'm gonna retune it and ship it back to Thomas. And they also had an extra spare duplexer sitting there that I'm gonna tune up for the same frequency pair so we can get a second opinion. And then he is going to put this back on the air after I get, after he gets these back. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm taking these back to my office and I'm going to do a tuning on them and ship them back to him. Thomas, I'm tuning this duplexer and this thing is not very good. It's pretty flaky. Watch it. Listen, you can hear the tone coming in on the receiver, but just look. Just barely. You can hear it. It's very difficult to get a real touchy signal because when I'm down here trying to tune this, this can down here, I got to put my finger there, it mutes out and I get it and I can't, I mean, it's just, there's a, a, a loose fitting there. Tell me what you want to do. I'm, I'm prepared to just kind of put this back together as best I can. And, um, I can donate to you guys a, one of these duplexers that, let me, let me do one of these duplexers. There's six cavity, they'll work great. You can just put it back there. Um, it'll probably be just as good, if not better. And I can get these down to minus 119, minus 120 DBM on receive and repeat. And if I, we were to replace your duplexer with one of these, I think given they're not, it's probably not too terrible of an RF environment down there that, uh, yeah, I think you'll be fine. Uh, it's been about a week since I was in Rolla with the, for the club, and I struggled to get the uh, repeaters, the duplexers that I took back from them, I, I struggled to get those tuned up. One of them had some issues that I'm just not going to be in a position to fix. They've got uh, some connector issues internal, and you can tell that the duplexer is kind of old. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, install this one in the, the machine they have down there. I just got done tuning this up to 443.825, 448.825. And I was, I put it in here and I've got this thing with really good isolation. I've got the, uh, uh, about 30 watts out um, with 40 watts in. And it, uh, open squelch at about minus 120 dBm and stays solid, uh, no descents. So this one's gonna work really well, I think, for their application. Uh, they're in a rural area, there's not a lot of RF in the area, so I'm not too worried about this repeater having some issues with the uh, interference on RF. So I think one of these six cavity mobile type duplexers will work great in this application. So I uh, got this done here on the bench and I'm gonna head back down to Rolla today and get that installed tomorrow. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. I thought you um, turned it off for the duration of the week. Well, I turned it off, but then I wanted to see if the range got any different with uh, just putting, taking the duplex, it, like putting it into a separate antenna. Okay, how'd that go with two antennas? Did it work? Or do you up with the... It worked. On okay, so what happened was it worked fine as long as I wasn't trying to talk to it. But this is on two separate antennas. Right. Oh. But th they're... Because I remember when we talked about, like, oh, are they too close together? Right. They are. Okay. Because it's, it, what would happen was I would key it up with my handheld, uh -huh. just my, you know, analog handheld, and the machine would come on and respond, and then it would turn off. Respond, turn off. Okay. Because it would hear me, yeah. hear my handheld, transmit, blow itself out, yeah. turn off, and so it never was really Yeah, really, you're radiating and blowing out the front end of the receiver. Yeah, which I mean, there are five meg split, but still, those antennas are pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Get that, get that repeater out of there, and we'll put that duplexer inside of it, and we ought to be all, we ought to be golden. Okay, we're making some progress. We've got the repeater right there on this stool, 
And what was happening was is that we were getting some, we had it all buttoned up and we were getting some nasty hum in the output. And of course it wasn't handshaking with the, uh, the network or the modem. And so we uh, found that we've got a bad, bad coax, we think. So we're gonna do some more testing, but um, yeah, everything uh, was looking good until we put it all back together and we started getting this nasty hum. And we think we fixed it now. So anyway, this is what you have to do when you're making repeaters. I'm gonna go to the, there we are, parrot zone. I'm gonna key up for the parrot. KC0 QVT. KC0 QVT. All right. We have got a machine working. It's putting 30 watts into the duplexer, or I'm sorry, out of the duplexer into the antenna system. And now we are going to, we got rid of the noise. We think, we know it's, 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 uh, it's that thing right there on the ground we've discerned is a bad coax. Uh, always check your coax, folks. And we got the repeater. We're not going to bolt it in yet 100% because we we're going to go out and do some range checking. We should see a significant improvement in performance. So with that said, what do you think, man? We're getting there. All right. Okay, so I got the parrot. Uh, now let's go see if we can raise somebody either on Worldwide or uh, maybe Texas or even on BYRG. All right, Thomas has got him, a, got him a radio. He's got his 868, and he's just getting into DMR. He's a student at S&T, Missouri S&T. He's majoring in electrical engineering, and he's just been uh, quickly indoctrinated into... Uh, Speed course here. Yeah, so what do you think so far, my friend? That's a, that's a pretty pretty deep uh, deep and vast world. Uh, well, hit the parrot. Let's, let's, let's see what happens. How do, how do I do parrot? All right. Well, you got a, you got this channel selector knob up here. Okay. Okay. There. That's you got you got all these different. I put in about three talk groups for there. you. Okay. But there's W zero triple E the parrot. So go ahead and and, and wait for the yeah. KX zero STL. Yeah, you got to turn up your volume there. You didn't have your volume very loud, so you couldn't hear the the quick. Okay. KX zero STL. There you go. Very nice. You're now DMR and. <laughs> okay, so now if you want to talk on the there's the BYRG which okay. W0 Triple E is a member. Okay. You can go into Texas statewide, see if somebody in Texas will talk to you. This is KX0 STO on Texas statewide. Can I get a radio check from someone, please? Afternoon. Name here is Thomas. Um, here at uh, Missouri S and T uh, University campus. Um, I'm the president of the radio club here, and we're getting a uh, DMR machine uh, installed up on top of the dorms. And I'm just uh, stepping my foot into the DMR world here, so I wanted to see if I got the radio working just right and the uh, machine, which it sounds like I do. So th thank you very much, sir. What's this radio called? It's yeah, a tethered into a Samsung uh, smartphone there back there. Okay, you got a you got an Anytone 868. I'm calling to you through a Anytone 868. Uh, I'm just standing in the in the parking lot here at the uh, at the dorms. Uh, I'm just kind of just testing it out, making sure everything works. The call here is uh, KX0STO. Name here is Thomas. Zero STL here. Thank you, sir, very much. I'll say 73s and I'll be clear. 
There we go. All right, man. DMR what do you think? World. Yeah, you're in. Man, that's scary. That's all right. <laughs> well, you're the you're the. Per- ATL, KC1 RLW in Connecticut. You're coming in great here too, guy. Look at that. You already <laughs> made two friends tonight. <laughs> hey, this is awesome. So what do you think? So are you going to be the proselytizer for down here at S&T? I hope so. Someone's got to learn how this works. <laughs> All right. Well, cool. Anyway, uh, just real quick. Yeah, this is Ron, KC0QVT. I've had a great time visiting with Thomas. we got the DMR repeater on the air. He's made his first QSO on DMR tonight, and the repeater's working great. And I think this has been an awesome experience, and I'm looking forward to working with the, the Amateur Radio Club here in Rolla. And i got to drive back to Kansas City tonight, but I'm really happy that these guys are going to take this thing on. Probably going to have several DMR IDs issued soon, and the club is just going to go bonkers with DMR and all these digital modes in particular. And it's great to be a part of that. This is KC0QVT.